Here's Brody Brazil. So here we are, what? Less than two weeks into baseball's regular season, and already MLB and its PA, the Players Association, are butting heads on a serious issue that's also related to a couple different things. It's kind of complicated. Let me actually begin like this, though. About a month ago, in The Athletic, this was the headline. Prominent MLB team physician sounds alarm on pitching injuries. That's right. Ken Rosenthal and Eno Saris were all over this story that already in the season, people were starting to notice more pitcher injuries than in prior years. Dr. Keith Meister is the Texas Rangers head team physician. He said teams are exacerbating the problem of pitcher injuries by emphasizing pitchers' performance over their availability, kind of riding the gas pedal a little bit too hard. Quote, these front offices, unfortunately, are living more in the moment than taking a longer, broader-term view. There is a way to manage this. What if a guy doesn't have a whip, walks and hits per innings pitched, of 0.8? What if he has a whip of 1.1, but he's able to play 162? Now, the stats go like this. Pitchers on the injured list, there were 241 back in 2010. And that decade of the 2010s is when we really started to see the UCL, the Tommy John procedure, a bunch more elbow injuries in Major League Baseball. It skyrocketed all the way up to 552 pitchers on the injured list in 2021. Now, in the last couple seasons before this one, those numbers have slightly decreased. But generally speaking, you can see the trend and the trajectory going up. Dr. Meister alone repaired 230 elbow ligaments in 2023. That's like one every business day of the week, every week for a full year. And he's saying that this is way ahead of pace, way ahead of that pace for 2024. And so there's also the question of velocity versus spin, right? What is causing this? Usage is one thing, how much you're using pitchers, but is it the velocity, how hard they're throwing the baseball, or the amount of times they're snapping that wrist, snapping that elbow, breaking off a slider, a sweeper, or some kind of breaking curveball? Meister, the director of the Texas Metroplex Institute for Sports Medicine, acknowledges the dangers velocity poses, but he said, quote, spin is worse. The sweeper puts tremendous stress on the inner elbow, Meister said. The power movement changeup, as Meister calls it, also puts inordinate strain on the arm. And to throw these pitches, he said, you have to sque uh, squeeze the crap out of the ball. Can't believe I messed that one up. You have to squeeze the crap out of the ball. So there you go. You pair that knowledge with the recent injuries. And this weekend alone, Shane Bieber going down, Spencer Strider going down, both likely to get the Tommy John surgery as a mitigation to their ailment, and all the other names here on the list of recent injuries from this season alone. But Bieber and Strider kind of catching everybody's attention and understanding that there is a great issue still going on here with arm injuries in Major League Baseball. And there's also this, which you should know. Baseball instituted the pitch timer last year. They shortened the time in one of those areas this year. From MLB.com, the pitch timer was introduced for the 2023 season, giving pitchers 15 seconds to throw with no runners on and 20 seconds to throw with runners on. The league's competition committee instituted a change for 2024. This was back in December, shortening the time with runners on base to 18 seconds. So it's 18 and 15, depending on if there's runners on or if there's no runners on base. Well, now we understand that there's the pitch timer thing going on, the arm injury thing going on, and MLB's Players Association has put these two things together. A statement from the executive director, Tony Clark, says this, Despite unanimous player opposition and significant concerns regarding health and safety, the commissioner's office reduced the length of the pitch clock last December, just one season removed from imposing the most significant rule change in decades. Since then, our concerns about the health impacts of reduced recovery time have only intensified. The league's unwillingness thus far to acknowledge or study the effects of these profound changes is an unprecedented threat to our game and its most valuable asset, the players. Just hours later, Major League Baseball responded by saying this statement, that one you just saw from the MLBPA, 
ignores the empirical evidence and much more significant long-term trend over multiple decades of velocity and spin increases that are highly correlated with arm injuries. Nobody wants to see pitchers get hurt in this game, which is why MLB is currently undergoing a a significant comprehensive research study into the causes of this long-term increase, interviewing prominent medical experts across baseball, which to date has been consistent with an independent analysis by Johns Hopkins University that found no evidence to support that the introduction of the pitch clock has increased injuries. That was a long sentence right there. In fact, JHU, Johns Hopkins University, found no evidence that pitchers who worked quickly in 2023 were more likely to sustain an injury than those who worked less quickly on average. JHU also found no evidence that pitchers who sped up their pace were more likely to sustain an injury than those who did not. End quote. And that brings me to my takeaways in all of this. I talked about the 2010s until now. I want you to understand this stat about Major League pace, uh, Baseball pitcher injured list days. Like how many total days per season did every single pitcher spend on the injured list or the injured reserve when it used to be called that? From 1995 through 1999, that number was 11,668. And no, that 11,668, that's not an average per season. That's a total between 1995 and 1999, all of those years, only 11,600 plus days of pitchers on the injured list. In 2023 alone, 31,558. Almost triple the amount in one year versus 95 to 99. You can clearly see that pitchers are getting hurt at a much higher rate than they ever used to. And 95 to 99 was not that long ago, 20 plus years ago, basically, almost 30. MLB says they've done 100 plus interviews. They're conducting a study on the issue. They're going to come up with a research group and they're going to try and make some decisions on figuring out how to mitigate this problem moving forward. And I've got to say, on behalf of the PA, somebody's got to speak up for young pitchers. I don't know if they ever will. When they're asked to throw hard, when they're asked to throw this many certain type of pitches, or they're encouraged to develop a new pitch, they're not thinking about themselves, their elbow, their future. They're trying to satisfy the here and now and succeed quicker and get get somewhere faster, get recognized better. They're trying for all of that in an instant manner. So I'm glad that all of these different places, like the media, Major League Baseball, MLBPA. I'm glad that everybody's paying attention to this. Now it's time to do something about it. And if we're talking about rushing a delivery and relating it to elbow injuries, now that part I'm not so sure of. If we're talking about the recovery time between pitches, maybe there is something to that. Maybe the fatigue builds up and maybe that relates to less technique, less fundamentals. But if we're saying that rushing it is part of it, I don't know. It's hard to understand. It's hard to comprehend. I think we need more evidence in all of this. And let me just say, the pitch timer, in terms of affecting baseball, it's producing the desired effect. Games and their pace are going a lot quicker than ever before. They've shaved off like more than a half hour per game on average across Major League Baseball. But herein lies the question. Is it possible that there was already this existing arm and elbow problem of pitchers in baseball? And there was. We can certainly see that. Is it possible that last year and so far this year, that pitch timer, which is doing a good thing for the marketability of baseball, it might be impacting an existing problem and making it only worse as we go along? I think it's really hard to figure this out here and now, but it's something to pay attention to. And keep an eye on. And obviously the arm issue in Major League Baseball is nothing new. But if the pitch timer is complicating it, you'd have to you'd have to figure out exactly how and why and what's the reasoning. But if it is, and I don't think it's impossible that it is, obviously we need to do something about it. So you've made it here to the end of the video. You know I appreciate that. Thumbs up down below. That'll greatly help this video and me and the channel. And by the way, leave a comment down below. What do you think? about this issue, the pitch timer or arm injuries in general, 
I just think there's a lot to figure out for Major League Baseball, its players, their players' association, and obviously the media will be covering this thing the entire time. And so will I. On that note, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below so I can definitely see you back here next time.